Hi guys, we're continuing today with section 8-3, which is multiplying binomials. This is going to be kind of similar to what we were doing yesterday, which was multiplying a monomial times something else, some sort of polynomial. Um, but today we're going to have a binomial times another binomial, so two binomials. So we can use that same method that we learned yesterday, which is the box method. So box method is like hands down my absolute favorite thing to teach. I love it so much. Uh, there's so many different things that you can do with it. And so today we're going to be learning how to use the box method so that we can multiply a binomial times a binomial. Now in this problem, I know it's a multiplication problem because my parentheses are right next to each other and there's no symbols in between them. So if you remember a couple days ago, in between my parentheses, I had like a plus sign or a minus sign. So you really do wanna look in between the parentheses before you decide what kind of math you should be doing. And in this problem, I'm gonna be multiplying. As I said earlier, we have a binomial and we have another binomial. So we're gonna take our box that we were using yesterday and we're just gonna make it a different size. So since our first parentheses has two terms and our second parentheses also has two terms, we're gonna draw a box that is two by two, like this. Now, since both uh, sides of the box have like the same amount of boxes, it really does not matter which parentheses you put where. So I like to start, I like to put the first one um, down the left-hand side. So I'm gonna put the X and the minus six down the left-hand side. Notice that I split it. So I have my first term next to the first box and then my second term next to the bottom box. Okay, now I'm gonna take my second parentheses and I'm gonna write it across the top. So one down the left side, one across the top. And with the second parentheses, I also split it into its two separate terms. So I put the X above the first box and then the 10 above the second box. When you're filling in the box, you're doing multiplication. Okay, so I'm taking uh, next to my first box is an X and above my first box is an X. So I'm gonna take those two X's, X and X, and I'm gonna multiply them to make an X squared. When you're multiplying, you do change your exponents. For the next box over, this is on my first row and my second column. So I'm gonna be multiplying my X times my 10, and that'll become a 10x. Next, I like to jump down to my second row. And in my second row, everything's gonna be multiplied by the negative six, because that's what's next to my second row. So in this first box, I'm gonna do the negative six, and then the first box is the x. So negative six times x is negative six x. And then over here in my last box, this is on the second row and the second column. So I did negative six times 10 and I got negative 60. So that's how you fill in the box. It's really just lining them up and then multiplying them together. Once your box is all filled in, you're going to pull the numbers out of the box to get your final answer. And when you're pulling the numbers out of the box, you're doing an addition problem. So now we wanna switch gears in our brain and we wanna think about adding instead of multiplying. One of the beauties of the box method is that there are gonna be some like terms, but they're very easy to find. Our like terms are always going to be on the diagonal. So you can look across that diagonal and those are the like terms and you're gonna combine them together using again, addition. So make sure you're thinking, you're thinking adding now. And I just kind of like to snake my way around the box. So I'll start up here with the X squared. And then I'm going to combine these together. When you're adding, you just add coefficients. So 10 plus negative 6 is positive 4. And I'm going to keep it a letter X. And then I snake around here to my minus 60. And there's my answer. So your final answers for today's problems should be, um, they're usually a trinomial. and But there's no parentheses. So if the original problem has parentheses, there should not be any parentheses in your answer. This is the box method. Let's try one more together. Okay, so here again, I have a binomial, two terms, 2a and minus five, and then another binomial, 3a and plus four. So I'm gonna draw a two by two box again today. Again, it does not matter which one you put where, 
Uh, just make sure that you're not jumbling them up or mixing and matching. So the 2A minus 5, those have to stay on the same side together. And I'm going to put those down the left side. So I put my 2A and then my minus 5, and I kept the symbol with it. When it's a minus sign, you have to keep the symbol with it. And then I do have to keep the 3A plus 4. Those have to be also on the same side. So I'm going to put those both on top, the 3A um, with one box, and then the 4 with the other box. So again, don't like mix and match. Don't put the 3A and the minus 5 together or something like that. Now I'm going to fill in my box using multiplication. So I'm going to multiply 2A times 3A. 2 times 3 is 6. And A times A is A squared. In my next box over, I'm on my first row still. So 2A and then times the 4. And that makes an 8A. 2 times 4 is 8. Jumping down to my second row, I'm going to multiply the negative 5 and the 3A. So th negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. And then finally, for my last box, I'm going to multiply the negative 5 times the 4. And negative 5 times 4 is negative 20. Now I'm going to snake around and I'm going to add. And we've got some like terms again, and they're on that diagonal. So this time I'm going to be adding together the negative 15 plus the 8. Negative 15 plus 8 is a negative 7. I do want to start with my a squared. So you do want to start um, in the top left-hand corner, and then you're snaking your way around until you get to your constant. So when you're writing your final answers, you do want to keep them in standard form. So a squared a, just a number. That's it for our examples. I do want you to try two of these before you leave today. So here are two to try on your own. You can pause the video and um, when you're done, restart and check your answers. All right, let's check our answer for that first one. 2n squared plus 19n and then plus 24. On the diagonal, you should have gotten a 16 and a 3. 16 plus 3 is 19. Okay, I'm gonna have you guys check that last one by answering a question. So I put a question on this video, please uh, choose the correct answer from your options. And that's it, just one video today. So box method for homework tonight, and I will see you guys later.